and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight, finally a happy story for once. Outbursts of irrepressible joy erupted throughout the exclusive island community of Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts last night. For hundreds of years, Martha's Vineyard had suffered from the soul-crushing effects of its own whiteness. Island residents understood there was only one cure. They badly needed diversity. In fact, they often said so. But despite their very best efforts over many years, diversity never came to Martha's Vineyard. It was tragic. Imagine an 18th century British frigate adrift on the high seas with no limes. Sailors slowly going mad, convulsing, dying excruciating deaths from scurvy. That was Martha's Vineyard. Except it wasn't lime juice they lacked. They had plenty of that because you can't make a gin and tonic without it. What Martha's Vineyard lacked was diversity, which is to say strength. Martha's Vineyard was a very weak place. As of yesterday morning, that island was 89% white, monochromatic and utterly homogenous. Nearly everybody there was a rich Democrat. 80% voted for Joe Biden. The median home price was over a million dollars. And then in a single blessed moment, everything changed. Relief arrived from an unlikely source. Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida, having made his own state of paradise, decided to help other states desperately in need. So yesterday, DeSantis sent 50 illegal aliens, most of them from Venezuela, to the Martha's Vineyard Airport. They traveled from San Antonio to the Florida Panhandle and finally to their new home on Martha's Vineyard. CBS Boston reports that after landing, the group wandered about three and a half miles from the airport into town, thereby instantly improving it. You can imagine the unrestrained jubilation on Martha's Vineyard tonight. Long-suffering islanders finally rescued from their own oppressive whiteness. In fact, let's go there now to check in on the celebrations. Well, that's not expected. Obviously, there's been a mistake. Now, our, our producers are telling us there are no technical problems. That is, in fact, a live shot from Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts, right now. <laughs> are you serious? Today is Friday, September 16th, 2022, and Martha's Vineyard is in crisis. Humanitarian crisis declared after DeSantis sent 50 Venezuelan migrants to the liberal enclave. Trump victories in fight for special master and Carrie Lake joins the show. My name is Benny Johnson, and this is The Benny Show. Starting off the top, ladies and gentlemen, beautiful things come from Florida in Plains in Florida, the planes depart and incredible things get brought around the country. Now, whether that's migrants to Martha's Vineyard or whether that's your boy Benny to your hometown, we are traveling next week all over the country for the next two weeks, actually, Iowa, Tennessee, California, and then throughout Florida, we will be traveling on our tour, the Meme Wars tour and the Made in America tour. We are very excited to get out on the road and see you. If you are in any of these towns, please come see us. This tour is powered by Turning Point USA, and we are thrilled to get out there. We are going to meme until the libs cry, then we will meme them crying. And we are so excited today to be bringing you so many crying libs on this show. Let's get into that first story, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Am I proud? To be a Florida resident, am I proud in the next 50 days I will get a chance to vote for Ron DeSantis for governor? And I will cast that vote so hard and so happily that I may break a finger. I tell you what, I am so excited to vote for this man, Ron DeSantis, because Ron DeSantis has used the single tool that Republicans are too cowardly or too weak to ever use, which is to force the left to live by their own own rules. It's called the dead chicken strategy. When you had a dog in the South and it kills a chicken and you don't want the dogs to kill your chickens, well, you tie the chicken around its neck and the dog will be repulsed by that chicken as the chicken slowly rots away. You could say, rub your dog's nose in it, right? If your dog does something naughty inside of your house or on your porch or where you don't want it to, well, then you can rub your dog's nose in it and it will be disgusted and won't do it again. Liberals ladies and gentlemen, must be treated in this way. They must be treated like a domesticated pet because 
They clearly don't want to live by their own standards. You see, the iron law of wokeism and leftism, the iron law that they live by is that everyone else, every other person in America must pay for their policies. But as soon as it's them who have to live with the consequences of their horrible actions on a national stage, their horrible immigration laws, their horrible economic laws, as soon as it's them who have to live inside of the terrible neighborhoods that they have created. I have experienced this personally in Washington, D.C. I lived on a very dangerous street. People were shot and killed in my front yard. We watched it. We've played the security camera for you. This footage, of course, in Washington, D.C., I wasn't allowed to own a firearm. Washington, D.C. made sure that I couldn't have any weapons, but that the criminals did. Ladies and gentlemen, this wasn't where fancy people live. The people who run Washington, D.C., they lived in Georgetown. Do you know in Georgetown, they won't even allow a metro stop. They don't let the buses run to Georgetown. You want to talk about redlining? That's a red line. The red line is we are white, we are rich, we are liberal, and you're not allowed to bring any of the bad things that we don't like into our neighborhoods. Let's let everyone else live with the horrific consequences of our welfare state, our broken society, our broken families, and the horrors that we have created. They won't come to our areas. We won't even let the bus stop here. Check it out still exists today in Georgetown. So that's just a microcosm of how the left operates. If you go to the Hollywood Hills, and I've done this for a documentary that we did called Walls Across America way back in the day when we were working for Tucker Carlson. We went to the Hollywood Hills. We went to Beverly Hills. We went to the most expensive neighborhoods in Hollywood. Guess what every single house had? Every single house had a wall. Every single house, LeBron James's house, we went to it. Jim Carrey's house, we went to it. Amy Schumer's house, we went to it. We went to all of the houses of the Hollywood elite, many of them who have homes in Martha's Vineyard. Martha's Vineyard, of course, an island, a private island. It has a moat around it, right? So the bad elements can't get there, all right? Martha's Vineyard is 89% white. Martha's Vineyard voted 89% for Joe Biden for president. But they are insulated from the policies that they declare The rest of us have to live with those of us who are part of mainland America, those of us who can't afford to live on an island. And so what Ron DeSantis did was use Alinsky style tactics, Saul Alinsky, he wrote rules for radicals, and he used those tactics in order to force the left to live with their own policies and the own their consequences of their own policies. And oh, it is sweet and it is delicious. I am going to read to you here from the New York Post, an incredible article that is going to show you two things. One, that the left in the libs on Martha's Vineyard, the white libs on Martha's Vineyard with the all immigrants are welcome here, no human is illegal signs in their front yard. Those people are the biggest hypocrites. I don't even like to say the word hypocrites. These people are scum. They're virtue signalers. They have no actual virtue. A virtue signal is when you don't actually have any virtue. You just want to signal to people that you're virtuous. All right? Jesus Jesus Christ talks about this in the scriptures. He calls the leaders and the religious of the day virtue signalers by another name. He said that they are whitewashed tombs. They're filled with death on the inside. These people have skeletons and rot inside of their souls. We will show you with exclusive photographs from behind the scenes how these Martha's Vineyard libs who voted for Joe Biden, who are neighbors with Barack Obama, how they are treating the migrants that showed up on their doorstep, how they are forcing them literally into camps, making them live in squalor, sleeping on the floor, And the second thing we'll show you is how they live. So enjoy, ladies and gentlemen, this delightful little tour down the lane of how the left operates when they don't have to live with the consequences of their own policies and then when they do have to live with the consequences of their own policies like the rest of us. An incredible, incredible article. Here we go. The posh liberal enclave of Martha's Vineyard has been thrown into chaos by the arrival of 50 migrants from Ron DeSantis, according to local reports. 50 migrants were flown to the famed Massachusetts Island, constituting what the local tourism board called a humanitarian crisis on Thursday. This is an ongoing situation, wrote the county emergency management rep in a statement, noting that the local authorities are actively collaborating to develop a coordinated regional response. We have reached out to our state and federal partners. This is an emergency. We need assistance, they said. Some local politicians learned about the new arrivals on Wednesday night's meeting 
on the Turlsbury Select Board. The town of the town administrator, Jennifer Rand, saying she'd received furious texts from residents. Furious texts. Royce, scroll through the article with me here, man, as we read. Furious texts from the residents. So the residents are freaking out. Rand said the migrants are headed to St. Andrew's Church in Edgartown, and they might be given short-term housing at Martha Vineyard Agricultural Society Hall. But it won't work for long because they don't have beds or showers. They're not allowing the migrants to use showers on Martha's Vineyard. Are you hearing me? I'm reading to you directly from the ground on the reports. She said, adding that feeding the migrants could also be difficult because Martha's Vineyard's Red Cross won't be participating. So they can't even feed the migrants. These people with the no human is illegal signs in their yard won't cough up a little bit of their caviar and a little bit of their Dom Perignon they have in the fridge. The beluga caviar from Russia. Hey, hey. No, no, uh, n- n- don't shut down the caviar. All right. We'll shut down everything else coming from Russia. We'll shut down the natural gas and the oil, but don't you dare shut down the beluga caviar from Russia. We can't live on sturgeon caviar. We must have the sweet beluga taste from our whalebone spoons and our tink tink of our champagne crystal glasses as we cheers inside of the beautiful, beautiful view of that sunset from our, the balcony of our $18 million mansion. Oh, we'll get there. We're getting there. You ready to see some... Real estate in Martha's Vineyard, we got you. In a prepared statement, the Red Cross said that they just can't handle this on Martha's Vineyard. So there is no showers, no facilities for these migrants, and the locals are sending furious texts to the politicians of the town saying, we are so angry that non-white people, that diversity has come to Martha's Vineyard. Now, how are they making these migrants live? Well, we have the photos, actually. Here is the photos of how the migrants are living on Martha's Vineyard. You're going to be shocked. We give you the warning here. You may not be prepared for this. You may not be prepared for this. You may be a good human being and not want the migrants to live like this. But here we go. Here's an image of how the migrants are living right now. Sleeping on the floors, crammed into these little spaces, shoved into a closet, essentially. Sitting there, no bathrooms, And no showers, according to the local reports. Let's go to the next image. Wow, look at that. Air mattresses. Look at the, they're just crammed in this teeny little room. Looks like a church there. They're all shoved in there. You can barely breathe in that room. Next image. Whoa, they're sleeping on the floors. Are you seeing this, ladies and gentlemen? Look at how the libs of Martha's Vineyard are forcing the migrants to live. Shoving them on the floor. Sleep on the floor among the refuse. Is there air conditioning? We don't know. Is there electricity? Maybe. We're not sure. What's going on? He's sleep on the floor, you filthy migrant. That's what the leftists say in Martha's Vineyard. Holy smokes. Wow. The locals of Martha's Vineyard are saying, we want them to go home. We, can't, we want them to, we got to deport them. We got to build the wall. We got to build the wall around Martha's Vineyard. Where's my MAGA hat? This is a woman who runs a shelter in Martha's Vineyard saying they have to leave and they must leave immediately. Watch. So what are the most difficult challenges right now? The difficult challenges are uh, we have at some point in time, they have to move (laughs) somewhere else, right? We we cannot, we don't have the services to take care of 50 immigrants. um, And we, we certainly don't have housing. We're in a housing crisis as we are on this island. And so we, we don't, we can't house everyone here that lives here and works here. We don't have housing for 50 more people. We don't have housing for 50 more people, she said. We don't have housing for 50 more people, she said. In the article, they go on to say that the community is considering building migrant Camps. That's right. Migrant camps. We don't have refugee services. I had no idea about any of this. Uh, uh, A local official is saying, okay, listen to this. You know, these are all sanctuary cities, uh, says says the local official from Edgartown. 
Thousands of people are coming into our city. I think it's time for us to continue, consider opening up barracks. Opening up barracks is what they're saying in Martha's Vineyard. Oh, that's very interesting. So they're going to open up barracks in Martha's Vineyard. They're going to shove these beautiful, diverse, loving, law-abiding, underrepresented community in Martha's Vineyard because it's a completely white island. They're going to shove them into camps. Just like Barack Obama did, actually. Barack Obama's the one who created children in cages. Of course, you know that. Barack Obama, very familiar with this process. He's a resident of Martha's Vineyard. You heard there the official saying, we don't have the space. We don't have the room. So our show actually went through and checked. So before you build camps, people of Martha's Vineyard, before you have more panic in the streets and send more furious texts to your officials, before you have more meltdowns, libs, we did a little research for you here on The Benny Show. We actually went on Airbnb just 15 minutes ago and were able to find dozens of homes available, over a thousand homes. Look at this. This is from Airbnb right now. Look at this beautiful house in West Tisbury. West Tisbury. It has a private hot tub. It's got a chef. Look at this. It's got a 4.5% rating. Look at this one in Edgarton. Six bedroom home. The Katama home near the south of Edgartown. It's only $1,400 a night. Ladies, well, think about the money we're giving to Ukraine right now. How many Ukraine payments of billions of dollars could house these migrants just for $1,400 a night? How much was the last one, Royce? Can we go back? Look at that. It, you're talking about a house that clearly has six bedrooms here for $800. That's a steal. It's available right now, October 2nd through the 7th. How many migrants could you put in this house? How many? Look at all these Airbnbs available. Whoa. Why don't they just open up their rental homes? Why don't they all open up their houses? All these people, all these sycophantic, white, persnickety, vineyard vine wearing libs sitting there with their champagne and with their little pastel polo shirts up pink, their pink polos and their labradoodles. Why don't they open up their vacation homes? Look at these. These are beautiful. What's next? Well, we checked Redfin. What about the homes that are currently empty on Martha's Vineyard? Go ahead and check out. Feast your eyes, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you may not live inside of a million-dollar home, but the people of Martha's Vineyard do. Look at this map. This is the map of available, empty houses on Martha's Vineyard right now. This photo was taken seconds before we went live today. Are you looking? Look at these. 15 million, 9 million, 26 million dollar houses. $8 million houses sitting there on Martha's Vineyard. Let's zoom in just a little bit, shall we? What do these houses look like? Oh, wow. This is an $18 million house on Craxatucket Cove Road in Edgartown, Massachusetts. Look at that pool. These migrants cross the Rio Grande. They can clearly cross that pool. Migrants, look at this house. It's available. It's totally empty. We went through the photos. It's totally empty. No one's living there right now. Look at the pool house. There's a pool house. How many migrants could you fit in that pool house? Look at this. A seven bath, six bed, 8,000, 9,000 square foot home. They definitely didn't include the pool house in that square footage. I mean, you have rules and regulations against that. Look at this. The, the, the property itself is a 10 acre property. You, how many lean-tos? How many tents? How many mango carts? How many uh, uh, goat barbecues could you fit on this property? How many? Guys, this is so simple. Bring the beautiful culture of our South American neighbors to this house. This house so white, so privileged, it's time for a little diversity to be added to this place. We searched, they got plenty of houses available. 
By the way, Mr. Diversity, the king of diversity, the man who lectured us for eight damn years about how white and how evil this country is, a man who went to live in one of the whitest places in America, a man who put his family's home in a moat away from the rest of society, a man named Barack Obama and Michelle Obama. This is their house. Look at that. It's on 30 acres. It's got seven bedrooms. It's got 10 baths. This house has nothing but space. They're empty nesters. Their kids are in college. Where's Barack Obama opening up his house to these migrants? Where is he? Where's Barack Obama? Why doesn't Barack Obama's house look like this? We did a artist's rendering of what Obama's house should look like if he were to welcome not just the migrants that were flown there by DeSantis, which is just like a small amount, but like, how about a thousand migrants? This is 50. How about a thousand migrants? What would Obama's house look like if he were to welcome these migrants? We did, again, an artist's rendering. There we go. There you go. It's the same photo. That's what Obama's house... Where's the Porta Johns? Where's the tents? Where's the little the little fires? The barbecue on the beach? Bring in the boats! Why can't the boats just come straight from Cuba to Obama's beach? He's got a private beach. You can go through the listing. You can see Obama's got a private beach, a little dinghy there. The, you could get the Porta Johns. Obama's net worth like a hundred million bucks, maybe more. Pretty good from a just a poor boy from the south side of Chicago. So why not Obama's house? Throw him in. He's got the room. He's got the space. Let him run. Let him run. That's what Obama's house should look like if Obama lived by his own standards. But you see, Obama will never live by his own standards. He's just going to force you to live by his standards. He would never. Neither would any of his neighbors, Steven Spielberg, Amy Schumer, Bill Gates. Those are Obama's neighbors. None of those people are swinging open their homes. Where was Barack Obama on the tarmac greeting these migrants? No, instead, they are treated like a disease. Now, Obama, of course, has a penchant for locking up children in cages and locking up migrants in cages. We're thankful he's not doing that. But here we go. Back to the article. Do you know that in Martha's Vineyard, they had to run and do an emergency run to grab a Hispanic girl out of class. This is a real story. Drag a Hispanic girl out of class. Her name is Maria Sanchez Roa. She was born in Colombia. And the libs of Martha's Vineyard got up off of their, 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 their vineyard vines clad tuchuses and had to set down the latest copy of Home and Garden and sprint to the high school to grab the one Hispanic girl who was there and demand that she act as a translator because none of them spoke Spanish. Real story. Maria Sanchez Roa, born in Colombia, said she was recruited to serve as emergency labor and translator. I was at home watching Princess Diana videos and my mom burst through the door and said, we have to go to the high school. I'm here because I'm a Hispanic kid who speaks Spanish. Martha's Vineyard had to drag a young Hispanic girl out of her room because no one, none of the elitist libs on that island spoke Spanish. They dragged her in and chucked her in and said, what are they saying? What are these words? We're so scared. Please help us. President Obama's house is worth $11 million. President Obama did not offer once for his house to be used for the migrants. Instead, according to Governor Charlie Baker of Massachusetts, barracks will be opened in nearby Cape Cod to house the migrants. We do not have enough housing for the people living here, says Eric, who probably owns two or three rental properties. I think we have that image, by the way. We were able to snoop into, according to uh, a user on Twitter, we were able to snoop into some of the private listservs in Martha's Vineyard, where the Martha's Vineyard, hoi polloi and elite, are now turning on each other like rats, shaming each other for having vacation homes, multiple vacation homes, 
and not allowing the migrants to stay at their multiple properties. I know we have this screenshot somewhere in the program. Uh, let's, we'll put it up when, we'll put it up when we got it. Royce, do we have it? Uh, ALX is getting, all right. We'll continue. Helen from Vineyard Haven wrote, now I see why they want a giant school in Vineyard Haven. I've been in tears for a week over the taxes going through the roof, worrying about how to pay them. I can't take much more of this. I'm a senior. I'm a seventh generation island native and I live on a fixed income. They've declared a humanitarian crisis in Martha's Vineyard. Over 50 migrants. They're putting them into camps. That's what they're going to say. They're making them live in squalor. They're forcing them to sleep on the floor. Yet these liberal scumbags won't open up their palatial vacation homes or their current properties on the market. Thousands of them. None of these people will open up any of their properties for the libs, for the, sorry, for the 50 Venezuelans that just landed on the island. This is called a virtue signal. The iron law of wokeism and leftism. Put it up on screen. The iron law of wokeism and leftism is that we will never live by our own standards. We will only shame you and call ourselves virtuous. But the moment we have to put a dollar into the tithe dish, the moment we have to walk across the street to help the homeless man get a meal, well, that's disgusting. He may have COVID. What we don't want that we, we we wouldn't allow that guy. We pay taxes after all. These people, these people are such frauds. It's sick. Look at this image. This is an image from a private listserv on Martha's Vineyard. This image starts. Let's go up to the top. This is a screenshot of a Facebook post in a Martha's Vineyard private chat. Find them permanent housing. I'm sorry. I thought there was a housing shortage here. Here's Libs freaking out. Martha's Vineyard Libs freaking out about housing these migrants. Do you need anyone to help in the evenings? Can we give them clothes? Can we just come and give them nice clothing? Here's another Lib from Martha's Vineyard. What else do they need? Says a dude from Martha's Vineyard. And this guy says, Pat... They need housing. You have two summer rentals. Oh! <laughs> it is getting spicy in Martha's Vineyard. Man, the clam bakes are going to be hot this summer in Martha's Vineyard. Boy, you are going to have some people that will not be invited to the Blue Crab Cook-Off this year. Boy, you better get your chowder spoons ready, baby, because Pat and Tom are no longer friends on Little Martha's Vineyard. Pat, they have, they need housing. You have two summer rentals. This from a private chat in the Martha's Vineyard Facebook group. Whoa. Look at Pat too, by the way. Look at Pat, Jimmy Buffett fan. This guy, like huge proponent of migrants and migrants flooding into America. He loves it. Pat's Pat's probably posted so many memes, BLM memes, no human is illegal memes. Pat's the kind of guy that sits there and says like that people who wear MAGA hats are racists. Yet Pat's got two rentals, two rental properties on the island. I wonder... Are Pat's rentals among some of these on Airbnb? Let's go look and see if we can find one of Pat's rentals. Let's see. We looked at Airbnb. Let's toss it up just one more time. Yeah, are one of those. Pat! Hey, Pat! One of those your rentals, buddy? Which one of these are your rentals, pal? Why ain't you opening those up? Two twenty nine a night. Pat can't Pat can't save it. Pat's gotta get that two twenty nine a night. Gotta get that sweet eight sixty two a night. Those migrants can't pay. These migrants are penniless. They gave all their money to the coyotes to get here and the human smugglers. They endured all sorts of hell on earth in order to cross the border illegally. And Pat, boy, oh boy, Pat thinks it was total extremism and racism for Trump to want a, a paltry five million, five billion to build his border wall. Would have prevented this in the first place. But hey, Pat said no more money 
to the racist policies of Donald Trump. But old Pat's not able to open up his two summer rentals to these migrants. Boy, oh boy, man, it is getting spicy in Martha's Vineyard. Martha's Vineyard, ladies and gentlemen, has declared a humanitarian crisis. According to Breitbart.com, Martha's Vineyard officials are freaking out over 50 criminal migrants flown into their town. Wow. Yet there are 4,000 border crossers a day in a single Texas border town. According to Breitbart Business Digest, Martha's Vineyard could house 6 million refugees. Ooh, mama. They can, they, only, only, 500, only 5 million and 900 some thousand to go, Martha's Vineyard. Let's go. What's the carrying capacity of Martha's Vineyard, writes Breitbart? We found, over, we found ourselves asking this question on Thursday when the island of Cape Cod announced that it was experiencing a humanitarian crisis after 50, arrived, 50 people arrived needing shelter. How much capacity does Martha's Vineyard have to shelter refugees? Census data reports that there are 17,000 year-long residences and 14,000 homes on the island. Let's estimate that each home has four bedrooms and each bedroom can comfortably sleep three people. So that brings the island's carrying capacity to 175,000 beds and 158,000 would be occupied. If anything, that likely estimates that the sleeping capacity of the island during the summer months on the island can house 200,000 people. So what's 50 to these people? The current population there is 194 people per square mile. That's around the population density of Indiana, Georgia, or North Carolina. If we were to raise the density to that of Washington, D.C., which has 11,000 people per square mile, we could fit all the newcomers plus a million more. That would leave the plenty of room on the island. Manhattan has 70,000 people per square mile. So by our calculations, that means 6 million refugees. If you just manhattan that's all you have to do. You just need the carrying capacity of Manhattan. Y'all libs love Manhattan. That's where you all live anyway on Martha's Vineyard. They're like all the, all the pe- Martha's Vineyard people, they vacation in Martha's Vineyard. They all live in Manhattan. And in New York, they love those policies. They elect those people. So just bring that carrying capacity to Martha's Vineyard and you can take in currently 5,900,000 more migrants. So bring them in, baby. We showed you what Obama's house should look like if they lived by their own standards. But of course they don't. So it leaves us to people like totally based and incredibly badass Ted Cruz to go ahead and call Martha's Vineyard what it is. A complete and total fraud. These people are the most racist, least diverse lot. You can tell that because of where they choose to live. They don't choose to live inside of the south side of Chicago, where Barack Obama's from. They don't even choose to live inside of my neighborhood, where, which is predominantly majority Cuban. In fact, I have a Cuban who's currently working for me, running this show. His name's Royce. He can wave at the people. Royce, tell everyone hi. What, what up? Royce is a, uh, what are you flossing today, Royce? What you got there? Ah, the Tucker Carlson King shirt. All right. My man. Royce, do you think that these white libs need a little more diversity? Yeah, I mean, I think they probably do. I wonder if these people would ever hire anyone like Royce. Have they ever met anyone like Royce? I don't think so. Ted Cruz says the exact same thing. Ted Cruz says that 15,000 illegal immigrants from Haiti entered Del Rio, Texas in a single day in an incredible speech. Here's Ted Cruz. Sent 6,000 illegal immigrants to D.C. The Democrat mayor has said, this is a crisis. Well, no kidding. If you think 6,000 is bad, try three and a half million. And look, if the mayor doesn't like 6,000, I'll tell you what Texas ought to do. We ought to send her 600,000. We ought to send them to Martha's Vineyard and to Nantucket and to Rehoboth Beach, Delaware and to the Hamptons and to Cupertino, California. All the places that rich hypocritical liberals drink Chardonnay with their pinkies in the air. 
I love based Ted Cruz. I love angry Ted Cruz. By the way, we are going to be joined by Carrie Lake in just a moment, so we're very excited about that. Hang tight. Carrie Lake, ladies and gentlemen, coming up. You want to hear her on this issue. The person you don't want to hear talk about this issue, who's also a woman in politics, is Elizabeth Warren, who is the senator from Cape Cod and from these posh little places. Elizabeth Warren loves hanging out there. She does all of her fundraisers there. That's where she spends her summer. Elizabeth Warren, I'm going to go get me a beer. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Elizabeth Warren is the one saying it's cruel to treat human beings like pawns in a political game. You know, you know what's cruel is to have an open border where over a thousand migrants died this year. Do you know this? They drowned or they died in the desert. Not a sh- tear shed for Elizabeth Warren over the brown people who died rotting in the desert abused, raped, tortured on their way here. Not a single tear from Elizabeth Warren. For them. Elizabeth Warren instead cries big old crocodile tears for the white aristocracy living in Martha's Vineyard, who now, we have breaking news, are shipping out their migrants. That's right. They're deporting their migrants. We have breaking news right now. Breaking news. The migrants who were sent to Cape Cod, there we go, the breaking news banner, baby. The migrants who were sent to Cape Cod, this is a, this is a fresh clip just published. The migrants are being deported by the liberals of Cape Cod. We can't believe it. We can't believe it. A fresh report right here. All right, here we go. Migrants deported by white libs of Cape Cod. Far too much diversity. Too many brown people. Too many beautiful, law-abiding immigrants sent to our little white enclave. Go ahead and check it out. We have the footage for you. There it was. Did you see it? There we go. The, 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 that's them getting on the bus. So what is this, ALX? I'm sorry, this is breaking news. Play the clip one more time. It's only like a three-second clip. Load them on the bus! That's what the whites say in Martha's Vineyard. The rich people, the libs, the people who by 80 plus percent voted for Joe Biden, deport them. Happening now, migrants flown to Martha's Vineyard by Florida's governor are boarding buses. They'll be heading to Joint Base Cape Cod. According to officials, 125 Massachusetts National Guard members are being activated to assist. Oh, where do I donate? Where do I donate to keep these flights going? I want 20 flights a day. What do we have to do? Where do I donate? This is incredible. Incredible news. Incredible news. Joe Biden, Joe Biden, last night, speaking at a uh, Hispanic Caucus Institute gala of all places, (laughs) called this (laughs) un-American. It's too beautiful. It's too, uh, the tears are so delicious. I just, I sip them out of my teacup with my pinky up. The teacup from Cape Cod, from Martha's Vineyard. I sip the tears and they just, they're so, they're so sweet. They taste like ice cream. Watch Joe Biden rant and rave last night to the Hispanic caucus. And with Secretary Marcus's leadership, we're committed to fixing the immigration system. Instead of working with us on solutions, Republicans are playing politics with human beings, using them as props. What they're doing is simply wrong. It's un-American. It's reckless. And we have a process in place to manage migrants at the border. We're working to make sure it's safe and orderly and humane. Republican officials should not interfere with that process by waging these political stunts. It's long overdue for Senate Republicans to come to the table and provide a pathway for citizens, for dreamers, those in temporary status, farm workers, and essential workers. We need to modernize our laws so businesses get workers they need and families don't have to wait decades to be brought back together. We have a process in place to manage migrants at the border, Biden said. Oh, what is that process? 
Oh, as we've covered many times, that process is Joe Biden personally flying those migrants, which is illegal, by the way. The federal government is using your tax dollars, the tax dollars that are created through your backbreaking hard work to fly the migrants on private flights all throughout the country, predominantly to red states or to places that they need these migrants to live in for their own purposes. The suburbs of New York, places like Detroit, all throughout Texas. You've seen the flights landing in New York. It's been covered. Miranda Devine, a guest of the show and a dear friend of ours, is, wow, ready to go. She was there reporting on the migrant flights from Joe Biden's administration. So Joe Biden's administration are flying migrants just the same. It's just that they get to choose which communities they put the migrants into. Ron DeSantis doesn't. Of course, Corinne Jean-Pierre was asked about this yesterday, and it is so delicious. Oh my gosh. You're not ready for this clip. In fact, you're really not ready for this clip. We have a cringe alert for you because this is a Corinne Jean-Pierre cringe alert. Watch Corinne Jean-Pierre get asked a simple question. Um... Why is no human illegal? Why are you so upset that migrants went to a place where Joe Biden likes to vacation? That's a little odd. (laughs) But does the White House stand by those comments that the border is secure? What we stand by is that we are doing everything that we can uh, to make sure that um, uh, that we follow the process that's been put forth. That, that's why we have uh, historic funding uh, to do just that, to make sure that, um, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, to make sure that, um, to make sure that uh, the folks that we encounter at the border be removed uh, or expelled. So first off, what was that? What say what now? Say, wait, he'd say, wait, wow, wow. What? What did you say? Like, that wasn't English, of course. And now you have her saying, again, repeating the lie that the border is secure. Well, the border was secure. Where'd the 50 Venezuelans come from? Where'd you get them, Karine Jean Pierre? Where did you get them, Karine Jean Pierre? Please illuminate for us where they came from. A person who knows exactly where they came from is Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis' spokesperson says Biden voters on Martha's Vineyard should open up their summer homes to illegal aliens. <laughs> just gets so, just gets better. This show is incredible. And stay tuned. Carrie Lake will be joining us in 60 seconds. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Ron DeSantis is playing to win, baby. We showed you that there's a ton of summer homes available. We went through the Zillow listings. We went through the Redfin listings. We went through the Airbnb. You saw it with your own two eyes. Those screenshots were taken seconds before we went live. There are thousands of homes available on Martha's Vineyard. In fact, according to Breitbart, Martha's Vineyard could take 5 million more migrants. So why don't they? That's what Ron DeSantis is asking. Ron DeSantis saying this yesterday. We are not a sanctuary state, and it's better to be able to go to a sanctuary jurisdiction. And yes, we will help facilitate that transport for you to be able to go to greener pastures. Biden would fly people in the middle of the night, dump them all across this country. There was no warning on any of this. And all those people in D.C. and New York were beating their chests when Trump was president, saying they were so proud to be sanctuary jurisdictions, saying how bad it was to have a secure border. The minute even a small fraction of what those border towns deal with every day is brought to their front door, they all of a sudden go berserk. And they're so upset that this is happening. And it just shows you, you know, their virtue signaling is a fraud. Okay? They... Their virtue signaling is a fraud. Put it on a t-shirt. Put it on a t-shirt. I got my Cry More Lib t-shirt on for this show in honor of this show, Cry More Lib. Somebody makes the libs cry a lot. Christina Pushwa, who's the spokesperson for the DeSantis campaign and a friend of the show. Uh, She said that Martha's Vineyards claims to be a sanctuary jurisdiction that welcomes illegal aliens. Most of those multi-million dollar mansions are summer homes that are vacant most of the year. They can be used as houses for illegal migrants. Time to walk the walk, Biden voters. That's right. Open it up, baby. Open up your summer homes. Somebody who will be joining Ron DeSantis 
as one of the greatest governors in America, somebody who will be joining the ranks of Republican governors who are going to push back on all of this, and somebody who I think may disagree with Ron DeSantis on this and may be contrarian, and this will be a very interesting interview, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome to the show, the great Carrie Lake. I don't know. After seeing that, what I just saw with Ron DeSantis, I might be able to get on board with this. (laughs) This is beautiful. And you're right. You know, the season is over in, you know, Martha's Vineyard and in the Hamptons. All of these homes have 10 and 13 bedrooms. There's plenty of space. So uh, it's definitely making a very good point and showing the people who are all for open borders, all for amnesty, what we're really dealing with. And they're getting a sliver of it. Yeah, a little sliver of it. So is it only 50 Venezuelans that have entered Arizona this year? Oh, you, of course, are running for governor of Arizona. Is there only 50? Is that it? You know, it's unbelievable. It's thousands and thousands of people coming into Arizona. And it's from, uh, I believe it's up to 147 or 150 different countries. We don't even know the background of some of these people, but we do know that last year last fiscal year nearly eleven thousand of them had serious criminal records and these were just the people that were processed that we were able to track down and figure out who they were and we're talking serious crimes from murder to rape to other sexual offenses to obviously drug trafficking and so this is the problem hey look we're all for legal immigration do it the right way come in through a port of entry go through the procedures And it does take a long time to become a citizen. That's fine. We're talking about people pouring in here, Benny, who have no business being here, are creating havoc on our streets. And I'm really concerned about the level and the number of drugs coming in. Arizona is now known as the pipeline for the most dangerous drug this world has ever known called fentanyl. And it's the number one killer of our young people. They're trying to destroy this country through drugs coming in and poison coming in. It's similar to the opium wars um, that happened centuries ago that literally brought down dynasties through drug addiction and despair. Yeah, yeah. And you're seeing that, uh, of course, across the streets of our major cities. I mean, they look like zombie towns. They, They it looks like demonically possessed. You go down to Venice Beach and we'll be there and we'll do we're doing a special on this uh, in two weeks. But it just looks like a zombie town. It it, It doesn't look real. It looks like a dark. It looks like a darkened. Uh, pseudo reality where people yeah. are like wandering around. They, they're, they're not clothed. They're shooting up in the street. They're, there's nothing behind the eyes. It's sick. It's sick. They're, uh, they're melting the brains of people practically with these uh, hardcore drugs. And, and that's why I have such a tough border policy where we are going to shut down this illegal behavior. And I'm going to go mano a mano with the cartels. This mama is not afraid of the cartels. Because what I'm afraid of is this country being destroyed. And so we're going to go after the cartels. We're going to stop their business here. And we are going to then deal with, at the same time, our homeless crisis. Because Mm -hmm. in the past four or five years, we've almost seen our our population of homeless double. And the left likes to say it's all because we don't have enough housing. That's not true. It's because people, many of them, are drug-addled. They are their lives have been ruined by drugs. And that's why we have to stop the flow of the drugs and then work to get these people off the street with some tough love, force them to get rehab and get back out there as a contributing citizen rather than somebody who's living on the street with a needle in their arm. You're right. It's like a zombie apocalypse. I've seen scenes from San Francisco and you can go downtown Phoenix and other parts of our state, not just in the big cities. And it's these people who are, They're almost like animatronic, uh, the way they're moving when they get this drug in them. It's frightening, and we have to stop it, or we will be ruined as a country. So you said that you want people to go through a port of entry. Now, uh, Ted Cruz has a bill to make Martha's Vineyard a port of entry. You also (laughs) said earlier that they have plenty of homes there. And earlier in the show, we actually did our due diligence. We looked through Redfin. We looked through Zillow. We looked through Realtor.com. And we looked through Airbnb. And we found this, uh, uh, Carrie, and we would like for you to respond. Uh, here are some of the homes that we were able to find in uh, in Martha's Vineyard that are available currently for, for sale right now. Wow. Uh, thousands of homes that are just pretty much sitting, sitting empty. We went to Airbnb 
and found this. Uh, over a thousand homes available. Pretty reasonable prices. Here's mm. some of them for your viewing pleasure. Look at this. Whoa. Look at that beautiful place. Look at that. Mind, I wouldn't empty. mind spending a weekend there. That's private, gorgeous. Private hot tub. Man, a little home in Edgartown. Can you... <laughs> uh, why, aren't, why aren't the Libs opening up these beautiful summer rentals that they own on Martha's Vineyard? And of course, Whoa. one of the most now famous homes where, on Martha's Vineyard. Now Bay. that is where we should be sending people. Right there. There's plenty of room if we need to set up even some, you know... A temporary, uh, uh, like almost a temporary housing outside, we could set that up. That looks yes. beautiful. We actually did a, um, we actually did an artist rendering of what Obama's property could look like. <laughs> I if, like the Porta Johns; those are great. Well, you'll need them, right? Obama does have uh, eight bathrooms in that home, but you'll need more um, for the thousands and thousands of migrants that Martha's Vineyard could conceivably house, right? So according to Breitbart, there's, there's thousands of unused rooms currently right now in Martha's Vineyard and Barack Obama's house has many of them. The Obama port of entry right there. That's amazing. (laughs) That is amazing. Um, you know, I, I love that we're illustrating the point in these liberal states and cities that think they know everything about what's happening with our, uh, our border states. And what's happening in our border states is obviously, especially thanks to uh, Governor DeSantis, not remaining in our border states. The problem doesn't stay here. It goes to a city or a town near you or a home near you when it comes to the drugs. So that's why we just are going to take a really tough stance on this. You know, these blue states are destroying lives and destroying quality of life for their citizens. It makes me sad for the people who live there because you know there are people in California or in you know uh, the Connecticut, Massachusetts, New York, these blue states who are feeling the misery of these um, terrible policies. I mean, they're pushing a plan in California. Now imagine you're on vacation there and you're in a hotel. The plan they're pushing is at the end of the day, any hotel that has vacancy needs to offer those rooms up to the homeless. Can you imagine, Benny, you're at some nice hotel, you saved your money, you're taking a vacation, you decide to go to California, and you're there with your children, and all of a sudden there's three rooms on your, uh, in your hallway that are, are vacant at the end of the night, and you're going to get three drug-addled homeless people right next to your room. This is going to destroy the tourism industry in California. And, you know, if they want to do that, fine. We'll take on, you know, our tourism industry is thriving in Arizona and we'll watch it thrive even more. But it's these crazy policies that they're conjuring up. They're asinine. And the poor people of these blue states are suffering. That's why they're fleeing and coming to states like Arizona. Yeah, well, speaking of fleeing blue states and California, Gavin Newsom saying that he should be investigated, he being Ron DeSantis, for kidnapping. Uh, in this instance, uh, I think we have the article here, but but Gavin Newsom claiming that claiming that Ron DeSantis kidnapped migrants and begging the DOJ to investigate DeSantis. Uh, your thoughts on this? Uh, <clears throat> you know, he's not interested in all in, in basically the kidnapping, in the child trafficking, in the human trafficking happening <clears throat> at levels we've never seen before on our southern border. He's not interested in looking at that. Don't look over there. Just check out what Ron DeSantis is doing in Florida. It's so obvious that he is trying to get uh, elevate his national name because he's looking on to hopefully, I think, he's got a plan to try to replace Biden. And can you imagine a, a more... Uh, awful choice. He is like Biden, I guess a little bit younger, but when it comes to policies, he is, uh, he would do the same kind of uh, horrendous policy if he ever did make it to the White House, which I don't think he will. Yeah. So Ron DeSantis, you seem to have a contrarian opinion of this on Tucker, your Tucker hit two days ago. And we were very fascinated in it. We played it on the show and the audience went crazy and they were like, yes, Carrie, yes. Yeah. Because what you said was, uh, in summary, that moving criminal migrants who are here illegally, who broke our laws further into the country right. might be uh, fun and it might make for a great headline, but that's not the point. They need to go that's back right. to where they came from. Now, yeah. I-, I wanted you to perhaps expound on that. You started by saying, hey, maybe you're going to change your mind. <laughs> Talk to us. No, I'm not going to change my mind. P- you know, but, but what I noticed what the press did and the media did was they're trying to create this between me and Ron DeSantis. Mm-hmm. I love the guy. The guy is a rock star. He is an incredible, the best governor we've ever seen. And I think he's fantastic. And they're always trying to create like we're fighting or something, which is um, asinine. Uh, I am not for 
transporting and continuing the trafficking of human beings that are here illegally. I'm for stopping it and shutting it down. And if we find people, we process them quickly, get them in buses, and I want to head them back across the border the other way. That's what I'm for. I will say this. They're making a great point. And I think what's happening right now by busing and, and, and um, you know flying these people into these blue states, it's really illustrating the plight that we have. And so for that, I do appreciate that because so much of it is getting the story out there and they're helping to do that. Eventually, I think we need to stop doing it, process people, get them back across the border and push like really hard to make that happen. If we just keep moving people further inland, that, that means it's going to be harder to get them out. Mm -hmm. You uh, have said that you will have the toughest border policy in America. Can you outline that policy for our viewers? Absolutely. Uh, we're going to finally do the right thing and what these governors should be doing. And on day one, we're going to call it what it is. It is an invasion at our border, the biggest uh, invasion we've ever seen on our home soil since the founding of this great nation. We are going to, I am going to issue a declaration of invasion and we are going to take over control of our border because the federal government can't be trusted to do it. What they're doing makes it appear, and I believe they are, like they're working with the cartels. They're, hmm. they're more interested in making the cartels business thrive than the protection of our citizens. And we're gonna stop that here in Arizona, send a strong message that this insanity at the border is gonna stop in Arizona. We're gonna get boots on the ground, Arizona National Guard, stop people from coming over. No longer are we gonna be opening our arms and saying, come on in. We're gonna say stop and don't come in. And we're going to blow up the drug tunnels, shoot down the cartel drones, and put some sanity on the border and take back control of our border, on, starting on day one. It would be incredible to hear that in contrast with Katie Hobbs's opinion on the Arizona border, but that won't happen. Is that correct? I'm, no, unfortunately it won't. I mean, she's breaking a, a long tradition. This, this state's history, since clean elections came around, we have always had a governor debate. Every single uh, election cycle, we've had a governor's debate and she is not going to attend because she knows she doesn't have a plan. Her plan on the border, when she fumbled her way through that question, when one of her own supporters asked her, is basically let Joe Biden take care of it and give everybody amnesty. That's really what her plan is. So she doesn't have a plan. And she's afraid to appear on a debate stage with me to show up for the job interview with the people of Arizona, lay out her plans for the state. We have serious problems, Benny, and we need some serious solutions. She's not willing to stand there on the debate stage, lay out her plan and discuss the solutions. And she's also afraid that I'm gonna call her out for her defund the police effort, for her anti-police effort, for her anti-border uh, border security efforts and her votes in the past and for her just outrageous policies. She's also afraid I'm gonna call her out for being a twice convicted racist. Two juries unanimously convicted her of racism and sexism in hiring when she paid women of color $30,000 less than the white men that she hired. And how funny is it that the left is always calling people who are on the right, who are conservative racists, when they in fact are the true racists. And because of her racism, it's costing Arizonans nearly $3 million in a settlement. And, you know, you think about what that $3 million could pay for. It could pay for a $5,000 bonus for every single state trooper that we have in this state who's working overtime to try to keep our, our roads and our communities safe. Think of all of the potholes that $3 million could fix and all of the infrastructure that it could take care of here in the state of Arizona. So she's costing us nearly $3 million because she is a, a, a convicted racist, twice convicted racist, and she doesn't want me calling her out on that. And I will do that on a stage with her if she finds the courage to show up. Yeah, I, will, I won't hold my breath. Uh, also, <laughs> the... The migrants can't hold their breath that they'll get to stay in the posh Martha's Vineyard community because they've been deported. I don't know if you saw this recent clip, but migrants are now actively being deported. They're leaving Martha's Vineyard. That's breaking literally minutes ago. Really? Uh, Where are they being yes. deported to? I think we have the, I think, do we have the clip here? Yeah. Yeah. They're being deported to, oh, they're, they're, they sent the National Guard after them, Carrie. 
<laughs> yeah, here, let me re- let me show you the clip and then I'll read you the news. Uh, I love it. Breaking news right now, Benny. This is breaking great. Breaking news. And you did this for your entire career in Arizona. <laughs> and, and I have a final question for you on it, but I'd love for you to react to this breaking news. Migrants flown to Martha's Vineyard by Florida's governor, boarding buses. They'll be heading to Joint Base Cape Cod, according to officials. 125 <laughs> Massachusetts National Guard members are being activated to assist. Here's the footage. <laughs> So the white liberals of, of Cape Cod wow. and, uh, and Massachusetts and Martha's Vineyard are loading them onto buses and deporting them. Wow. And they want to and they want to criticize my plan to use the Arizona National Guard to stop people from coming in illegally. This is just hypocrisy at a level. I didn't think it could get any higher, the hypocrisy of the left. I think we just went into another stratosphere. Final question for you, a message to Barack Obama, who, you know, is is presumably wanting diversity in this country, but just not in on his private island. You know, he's been um, such a, a big root of the problem. I think he's the most corrupt president we've had. And um, I think, you know, he really should have to take a look at what his policies have done to this country. Mm-hmm. He had such an opportunity to do good things for this country to bring us together. And he chose division. And it's, it's really sad. And I think uh, he's probably whispering in Joe Biden's ear and guiding him along. Sadly, I'm ready for this whole administration to move along and let's get some sanity once again in the White House. Yes, some sanity in the state of Arizona, an incredible state. We have your website right here to uh, toss up on screen. Can you tell people where they can follow your campaign, how they can help you if they live in Arizona? I love it. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, CarrieLake.com, K-A-R-I-L-A-K-E.com. I also encourage you to head over to my Rumble page. We just put up a fiery, wow, I can't, I still can't even believe what happened last night. It is our, um, our press conference we held, Law & Order press conference, and the media is so, they, they're so trapped in their liberal talking points, they can't even, uh, you know, it, it's like they can't pull themselves out and see reality. And so we hit the media pretty hard. I encourage you to go take a look at that and, and watch it right to the very end. It gets pretty spicy. Spectacular. We want the Ron DeSantis of the West, as she is called, <laughs> Carrie Lake. It. Ron DeSantis soon to be called the Carrie Lake of the East. And we make are sure excited. You, and make sure you spread the news. <clears throat> if you have friends in Arizona, make sure they are registered to vote. We need to get them out and vote. We need to get them out and talk to your neighbors. Take a look at where I stand on the policies, Benny. My Go to my issues page. I lay it all out. There's no hiding behind any, you know, one or two sentence answers. It is full on policy. And my policies will help make Arizona the greatest state in the country. And they'll also work for all Arizonans, whether they're Democrat, Independent, or Republican. Them's fighting words for people who live in Florida right now. Oh man, we've yeah. been enjoying a nice little ride here. So we look we'll forward have some to competition it. now. <laughs> we look forward to it, and we will get that video pulled, and we'll play it at the end of the show. So thank you, Carrie, awesome. for joining Thanks, us. Thanks, Penny. Bye bye. God bless you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Carrie Lake. You heard it here first. Carrie Lake responding to the breaking news that Martha's Vineyard is deporting all of the 50 Venezuelan criminal migrants that were dropped on their little private white island by Ron DeSantis. What a humiliation for the regime. Joe Biden is screaming about it. Barack Obama is screaming about it. Kamala Harris, of course, had people dumped on her stoop yesterday in uh, in Washington, D.C. by the governor of Texas, of course, not to be outdone. And so you have loss after loss after loss for the regime. But ladies and gentlemen, the show gets better. This is Good News Friday, after all. And so the show continues with... Donald Trump scoring massive victories last night, breaking late last night. Donald Trump won his battle against the FBI and the DOJ, at the very least in this regard. The special master was appointed. That special master was Donald Trump's first selection for special master. The DOJ was completely nuked from space by this judge. The judge says the DOJ and the FBI are leaking. She castrated them in an incredible decision. We read it to you live. And John Solomon had this to say on Fox News of the catastrophic rebuke of the DOJ. This is a huge win for the Trump team tonight. 
It is. And it's also a rebuke of the Justice Department. The Justice Department has been making the argument. We have an honor system, Your Honor, where you can trust us. And the judge said today, you know what? I'm not willing to accept your representations. And when you think of that statement, you think of the last six years of the history of the FBI, the honor system they violated with the FISA warrant, the honor system they violated when they failed to protect the young women on the Olympian team from the sexual abuse, the honor system they failed to do when they overcollected evidence at Mar-a-Lago. That judge's statement is a very strong statement that the judiciary no longer trusts the FBI to follow its honor system. So the judge essentially saying that the FBI is not to be trusted. The judge is essentially saying that the FBI cannot be allowed to have the material that they stole from Donald Trump, including among uh, among that material, Donald Trump's medical records, Donald Trump's taxes, Donald Trump's passports. Uh, They went through Melania's unmentionables. They stormed through Baron Trump's room. What the hell is wrong with these people? What kind of country do we live in? And most importantly, who's going to hold them accountable? Well, it seems like the American people have the best shot at doing that by electing Republicans who will investigate these criminals. It's a criminal cartel and it's a mafia that runs this regime. And they're obsessed and addicted to power. And they need to be starved of that power by the American people. The DOJ has obviously screwed this up so badly that some of the most level-headed pundits on Fox, Greg Jarrett being one of them, saying the judge spanked Merrick Garland. Whew. All right. If you're into that kind of thing, take it away. The almighty imperious Merrick Garland seems to think he's judge and jury still wearing a black robe elevated above everybody else. And the judge, in diplomatic terms, spanked him and said, look, uh, you're arguing assumptions and you haven't given uh, the other individual here, Donald Trump, an opportunity to make a counter argument. You're assuming that there's no executive privilege. You're assuming the alleged classified documents are indeed classified when Trump says they were declassified. Uh, And so the judge said it's not up to you. These are issues of law and fact that are to be litigated. And we're first going to have an independent, neutral individual uh, go through all of these documents and then will it litigate things like classified and executive privilege. And the judge, you know, also once again in her order this evening sort of spanked Merrick Garland saying you're you're your own worst enemy. Uh, Instead of seizing documents you claim you want, you took everything under the roof. Guys, they got destroyed. They got destroyed. According to the Federalist here, with an incredible breakdown of this order, it's a pretty long order, but it's a beautifully reasoned and well thought out, even handed order, but it destroys the regime. It's incredible. The court selection of one of Trump's preferred candidates to serve as special master represented a sliver of Judge Cannon's Thursday order, which the remainder of detailed the order providing several additions, positives for Donald Trump. First, Cannon directed Deary, who's the special master now, to review all of the materials seized during the Mar-a-Lago raid, something the DOJ desperately wanted to avoid, especially for the documentation it segregated and marked as classified. Second, Deary must verify that the property listed in the detailed property inventory represents the full and accurate extent of the property seized. Here, Cannon suggests that Deary may consider obtaining sworn affidavits from individuals involved in the raid. While not fail-safe, the sworn affidavits will lessen the chance that the agents committed or omitted uh, property theft from the inventory list. Wow. Holy smokes. Judge Cannon also directed the special master to review the documents for privilege, including the formal assertions of executive privilege. That represents another victory for Trump because the DOJ had admitted, had adamant that Trump had no right to assert executive privilege. But without knowing what documents the DOJ has, Trump lacks the ability to develop an argument that he retains some vestiges of of executive privilege. Why would Donald Trump think that these are executive privilege documents that were taken from Mar-a-Lago? Well, because he declassified the documents from Mar-a-Lago. Donald Trump said this many, many times. He said it yesterday. Trump said that he had declassified everything found at Mar-a-Lago. He has said this many times and he repeated it yesterday. Everything was declassified. Trump said Thursday and insisting that official records prove that he took only declassified items to Mar-a-Lago. Trump told Hugh Hewitt this on the radio that he did nothing wrong and the DOJ has absolutely zero reason to indict him. Check it out. One of those district court judges approved your request for a special master in the papers. Now, I know something about presidential papers. I actually, Mm -hmm. I know a lot about the presidential library system. Every former president has papers that should not be with them by accident. 
Did you take those papers down there after declassifying them intentionally, or did you have any idea they were there? Remember this. Remember this. Everything was declassified, number one. And if you look at the uh, presidential, if you look at the act that was passed, it talks about what you can do, what you can't do, how you negotiate with NARA. And then if you look at what's running NARA, it's radical left run, radical, radical left. And then you take a look at Hillary with her 33,000 emails that were deleted, deleted, and you take a look at Obama and others, and people say Trump's gotten treated very, very unfairly. Hmm. Okay, remember this. Everything was declassified. What is he talking about? The Russiagate documents, of course. We've said this many times on the show. We've had some of the largest experts on this issue, Rick Grinnell, Cash Patel, Mike Davis, come on and tell us this is the Russiagate documents. They're after these Russiagate documents that were declassified because they prove the collusion of the Obama regime with the Hillary Clinton campaign in the promotion of this sick lie about Donald Trump propagated by who else but Russian actors? Igor Dranchenko is currently being prosecuted by John Durham. And that trial happens next month, and there are bombshells already coming out that Igor Dranchenko was paid informant for the FBI. Incredible. The guy behind the dossier. How evil, how sick is this world? How disgusting is the regime, the permanent political class, or the deep state? Whichever one you want to choose, it's all the same. These people who are absolute barnacles, they are pests, they are pestilence, they're parasites. They suck the blood of a healthy system here in America, and they do it for their own power and engorgement, and they leave nothing but destruction in their wakes. And this is what they were trying to prevent, is the release of these documents that will absolutely destroy them. And Donald Trump, according to sources, was going to use these documents that were declassified uh, as a Failsafe when he runs again in 2024. He was going to use these documents to show exactly the criminal conspiracy against him and destroy that regime. So that's what they tried to take. That's what they tried to take, ladies and gentlemen. Trump's lawyers have repeatedly invoked the Presidential Records Act in their defense of the former president. The law says that the government shall receive and retain complete ownership, possession, and control of the presidential records. Trump's team argues that the law allows Trump to designate any government document, even classified ones, as his own property. This is, of course, argued and confirmed law. We know this. We had Tom Fitton on actually last week, one week ago, to confirm exactly this. Tom Fitton's the guy who sued to get the access to Bill Clinton's sock drawer. God help him. We don't want to know it's in Bill Clinton's sock drawer. Bill Clinton won that because he was able to say, hey, these are my private documents. And there we go. That's the settled law of the land. To point to a provision of the law that says the presidential records of a former president shall be available to such former presidents and former presidents designated representative, claiming it gives him the essential ownership of the document. And Trump is right there. And we've had Mike Davis on to essentially say that Trump has the winning legal argument here. And they're going to get destroyed if they go to the Supreme Court with this one. Because the Supreme Court is going to say, whoa, it is our job as a branch of government in order to oversee the executive branch and in order to keep you in line. And you are grossly out of order here. They're going to get smashed, man. So the DOJ is in a really, really bad spot. The DOJ is going to lose, much like Don Lemon. Let's end on a happy note. Don Lemon lost his job this week at CNN. Now, he's still technically with the company, but he no longer has a primetime show. Don Lemon was moved to the mornings to a struggling, uh, very sad morning show. It's called New Day. All right, nobody watched this garbage. New Day. Jeff Zucker also uh, completely disgraced the head of CNN who's been fired. Uh, this was his big thought process to make a show called New Day. Nobody watched it. They're going to move Don Lemon, demote Don Lemon uh, to this show, may, make him like a morning show guy. And then they're going to fire him. That's what's going to happen. That's going to happen here. Uh, this, according to Fox News, CNN's left-wing host Don Lemon will end his primetime show, Don Lemon Tonight, and move to mornings later this year, the network announced on Thursday. Lemon will join CNN's host Poppy Harlow and Caitlin Collins uh, on the reimagined morning show and will replace long struggling, uh, the long-struggling New Day. The move leaves CNN uh, with a gaping hole in his primetime lineup. Chris Cuomo, of course, fired. Uh, earlier this year, and CNN doing its best to live up to its new owners who want to turn the organization back to its roots of actual reporting. So we'll see. We encourage them, if Carrie Lake wasn't going to be governor, to hire Carrie Lake because Carrie Lake was a newswoman. She was a anchor 
and a news reporter in Arizona for the last 30 years, I think. And so Carrie Lake was just an incredible facet. If you lived in Arizona, you grew up watching Carrie Lake, just like a lot of us grew up watching our local news anchors. And so Carrie Lake was uh, an, an incredible fixture of Arizona life. Now, this is what makes Carrie Lake so good on the stump and what makes her so good in her uh, engagement with the press. Too many times Republicans are just complete pussies when it comes to dealing with reporters and with the media. They just don't know what to say. They cower. They let them ask the questions and define the argument. Carrie Lake does none of those things. Carrie Lake teased that we should go check out her Rumble and find her latest video on law enforcement. And so we did that. And so because Carrie Lake joined us for this show, we thought we'd play you that video that she was teasing uh, to to wrap up today. So here's what Carrie Lake was uh, talking about. This is my first time watching it with you. Let's see. Carrie, a lot of people of color feel like they're unfairly targeted by police. You know, is, is, um, are they wrong to feel that way? And regardless of whether there's any merit there, um, what can you as a governor do to improve um, perception of police? To, uh, you know, ensure that everybody feels like can you repeat the first part of that i missed that yeah a lot of people of color feel like they're a lot of people of color a lot of people of how many people of color have you talked to about that i mean if you look at surveys um which surveys i'm happy to i'm happy to look at those stats because i will tell you this that i talk to people of color i talk to all arizonans they're all concerned about the crime just because your skin isn't the same color as yours doesn't mean you want your kids to be walking down the street in an unsafe neighborhood Every Arizonan wants safety and security in their neighborhood. It doesn't matter what your skin color is. And, I, and if you look at stats, you will look and see that, that police do not target people of color. That is a lie that's been perpetuated by the left and then spread and disseminated and re-spread in the media. Check the stats. Check the stats. You don't believe that's an opinion a lot of people of color have? Uh, I don't. I think you guys find one or two people, three or four, and they're activists oftentimes, and then you spread that narrative. Go into a neighborhood and ask the people in neighborhoods that are minority neighborhoods, do you want fewer police? Do you want to defund the police? They will look at you like you are the craziest person on the planet. Nobody wants that. Carrie Lake is based. By the way, shout out to our live chat here on, on, on YouTube. We just joined in the live chat. Uh, I got uh, a, a wonderful team that manages our YouTube content. And they said, Benny, you have to join in on the live chat. You got to jump in on the YouTube live chat it is bananas, B-A-N-A-N-A-S. So huge shout out to the YouTube live chat and we will be monitoring these comments and we'll be working on putting the comments on the screen. Okay. We're going to, we're working on a functionality here. We're testing out some things. We're getting a brand new studio that we're building right now in like a, this awesome warehouse. It's going to be so sick, but we're working on so many different new things, new shows, getting the comments put up on the screen so we can talk with each other during the show, so on and so forth. There we go. There's Judy Ann from Facebook saying, God bless America. Just little functions that we're able to bring to you. That's why we do this show. We want the news to be brought to you. We are you, man. I mean, yo, I, maybe you don't live here in Tampa, but I, I grew up in Iowa, right? Like, I grew up in Iowa, working class dude, paid my way through college. That's just the way it works, right? You grow up with family values. You grow up with some morality. You grow up as a Christian. You want to start a family. You got a couple little kids downstairs. You might have heard them crying during the show, because they, I, well, I could hear them crying during the show. I'm like a young father. That's all I am. I'm like a normal American. That's the same as you. We have the same values and the same. Sense. Unfortunately, most people in media are like Don Lemon. Unfortunately, most people with a platform don't come from where you come from. Think like the people of Martha's Vineyard, and you are not represented there. So we want to represent you. We want to make sure that you are represented on the show and your opinions are represented on the show. That's why we give you our email to send us show ideas and thoughts about what you think the show could do better and what you think the show could do worse. A lot of people are like, stop yelling. So I'm going to try and not yell as much. <laughs> the reason why I yell is that I'm very excited. I'm very caffeinated in the morning. And also, I just want to save this country for my kids, just like you. Are you a parent? Are you a grandmother? Are you, uh, you know, a grandfather? father? Or do you want to be a parent? Most importantly, Royce, you want to be a parent someday? Royce wants to be a parent someday. 
Royce is getting married, by the way. Shout out to Royce. Come on, Royce. Toss it up, baby. Royce is getting married uh, in two, in two weeks. weeks. So congratulations to Royce. Young man getting married. This is the universe, the ecosystem that we are creating here. Like we want to create jobs. We want to create careers. We want to create a community. That's why we love the live chat. Here we go. The live chat saying no more yelling. Okay, I get it. All right. Got it. Got it. Got it. Carrie Lake is a rock star. We watch this. We do this show live. Congratulations, Royce, says Lee Jones on YouTube's live chat. This is why we do this show. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations, Royce. And then Ingrid De La Rosa the says orange, orange man, man back. back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think she's talking about Trump, but maybe she thinks you're orange. Royce, we don't know. We're not sure. Microaggression because you're Cuban? We can't figure it out. We'll try on the next show. But the reason we continue to do this show, we'll always do this show. It'll take all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't stop us every single day coming to you. And we'll be coming to you from the road next week uh, as we travel and do our tour is because we have our priorities straight. God, family, country. That's what drives us here. Okay. We get, we're, just, we're just normal people. We want to talk about things that normal people care about. We're on Airbnb. We can look up how many Airbnbs there are in Martha's Vineyard. And we can also check in on the live chats. We can do this show and we can make sure that you have a voice. So that's what this show is all about. Ladies and gentlemen, we want the same thing you do. What do we want? We want to stay free. We want to stay free and we want to be honorable to the ancestors that built this great place and made this incredible country, who, who bequeathed it to us. And we are so lucky to be born in this current era with the decadence of Western civilization at our fingertips. Everything from Wi-Fi and internet to talking today to the legal system to the people who came before us, who like actually car like who actually made this country a place for all men, who where all men can be created equal. God bless our founders. God bless our ancestors and God bless those people who lived much harder lives than us so that we could live here today. Again, dripping in all of the decadence of Western civilization and in the premier first world uh, nation and the greatest nation that ever existed here, America. What we want to do on the show is to make sure that that country prevails and lives on and that we will not become the first generation to leave a worse America for our children. I got two kids downstairs. I want more. I got two kids right now. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what an honorable country and an honorable citizen would do to ensure that they don't leave this place worse. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to honor our ancestors who built this place, and then we're not going to leave a worse America for our children. So that's why we fight every single day. That's why we're doing this, baby. Stay mad. Stay salty. We drink your delicious tears. We drink them up. They keep us going. We know we got haters in the comment section. Stay mad. Salty, salty tears. I want it. They're delicious. They taste like ice cream. And we just want to do huge shout outs. A lot more to come. Great things to come on this program. We're just getting started. We hope you have a beautiful weekend in the best country that ever exists on this damn earth, America. God bless you. My name is Benny Johnson. This is The Benny Show.